I'm about to show you how to get set up to play the restored online multiplayer for Killzone 2 using the RPCS3 emulator. If you instead want to play on an actual PS3, I made a totally separate video on how to get set up for that. By restored, I mean a private server. The official Sony server for the game was taken down many years ago. The first thing you need to do is get the game installed into RPCS3. It doesn't matter which region of the game that you have. Then make sure you have updated the game to the latest version, which is 1.29. If you don't update it, you won't be able to play the multiplayer, so check the version column on your game list. If it doesn't say 1.29, here is one way to go about updating it. Go to the RPCS3 website, rpcs3.net, and find their link to their Discord group. You're just going to use their Discord for a few minutes, you don't have to stay with them. When you first join, it'll tell you you need to complete a few steps before talking. Go ahead and do those steps. Then head over to the channel called Bot Spam. And in the chat, type in these words exclamation point PSN check update, followed by the serial number that goes with your version of Killzone 2. The same serial number that shows on your game list here. It'll give you two files to download. You have to install the one for version 1.28 first, and then install the one for version 1.29. To do that, click the hyperlinks and it'll start downloading. My computer always tries to block them from downloading, but I override it. By the way, these files are coming from Sony's servers. Once you have them, you need to drag and drop them into the RPCS3 game list. Start by dropping in the 1.28 update and then drop in the 1.29. Each time it'll ask you if you want to install the package, say yes. Once they are installed, you have to keep those update files in whatever folder you dragged them from. And yes, I am aware that sometimes my mouse pointer is appearing twice in this video. If so, just ignore the small one. To play on this private server, just know that you are not allowed to use cheats in any way. You may be blocked from entering or banned altogether if you do. Some people may not even know that they have cheats enabled, so let me show you how to check. Go to Manage, Game Patches, find your game on the list and uncollapse everything that's under it. It's considered cheating if you have Debug Menu or extended FOV enabled. The other two things are fine. Next, you must create an RPCN account if you don't have one already. This is an account that simulates a PSN account and it's mainly used for playing online games. Creating one is very simple. Go to the configuration at the top and on the menu that appears, select RPCN. Select account. Make sure the dropdown is set to official RPCN server. Click create account. Make up a username. Just know that this is the name that will appear when you're playing online. When you hit OK, you'll make a password and have to enter it twice. Hit OK again and you'll have to enter an email twice. Hit OK. Select yes to confirm. In a couple of seconds, a pop-up will ask for a token code that was sent to that email that you specified. Pull up that email and paste the code into the box and select OK. And you're now done setting up the RPCN account. It'll automatically sign you in from that point forward, so you don't need to go back and mess with the configuration anymore. Now you need to change some network settings. It's going to be part of your configuration. As you may already know, there is a global configuration and you can also create a custom configuration for each game. You can change these network settings on the global configuration or if you have a custom configuration for Killzone 2, you can change it there as well. If Killzone 2 is the only game you intend to play online, I suggest you do it globally. Here's how to do it. Click the configuration symbol. Then click the network tab. In the network status field, pick connected. In the DNS field, override whatever's in it with the set of numbers I have on the screen right there. 
And then make sure the box for enable UPnP is checked. And then on the right, under PSN status, select RPCN. And then click save. If you wish to update the custom configuration with the same settings, right click on the Killzone 2 row and select change custom configuration. If you don't see it, you don't have a custom configuration. If you do have one, proceed to make the same changes to it that I just showed you for the global one. What you have done so far is the bare minimum for getting set up to play the multiplayer. But I strongly suggest you watch all the chapters remaining in this video because new players and returning players often have trouble with certain things and I want to help them. Right now though, I'm going to have you test your connection, start the game up, and from the main menu choose Warzone. And then you should arrive at this screen asking you to accept the license agreement. If you get an error message, you may have done something wrong with the network settings in RPCS3. So go back into those and check that you did everything correctly. If you get this region screen, go ahead and select the only one available. In the future, there could be more than one available. In that case, just choose the one that's closer to you. This screen here just says it's currently in alpha testing. Hit X to continue. Select play on the left and select join on the right. If you made it this far, then your setup is good. Next, I want to show you the proper way to find matches because all the time I hear people saying I can't find a match, even though I know a match is actually going on. First of all, just know that the PS Rewired website has a real-time count of how many people are playing. Just go to the website and click on Killzone 2 and you'll see the number of players, their usernames, and some details about the matches they are in. The highest number of players are on Saturdays, but there are matches happening every day. When you're searching for those matches using the PS3, make sure you set the fields as shown here. I put sometimes no for ranked match because every once in a while someone will create an unranked match, like one in every 200 or so. If you know there are games being played but they aren't coming up when you do this search, just know that if a match is full, it will not appear on the search results. And FYI, those max limits on the website are not that accurate. Now some people get irritated because they can't enter a full match, but just know that people leave matches all the time. So keep hitting square, then X to refresh the results. Doing that, I've never had to wait longer than a minute to enter a match. If you see a match that has a lock symbol next to it, it means nobody can enter that match without a password. Typically, it's veteran players playing in a small match amongst themselves. If you insist on joining, reach out to one of the players via the PlayStation Network or the PS Rewired Discord and ask if they can provide you with the password. If you want more information on when people play, or if you want to chat with other players, I suggest you join the PS Rewired Discord. I'll put an invite in the description of this video. When you get in there, you won't be able to see the Killzone chat channels until you go into select your game role and click on the Killzone icon that's in there. Next, I want to suggest that you get a save file that has every ability and every weapon unlocked. If you ask around on that Discord, someone can provide you with a file. If you prefer the slow route of unlocking the weapons and abilities yourself, just know that probably 95% of the player base has everything unlocked, so you will be at a massive disadvantage, both you and your team. If you want to proceed with getting a save file, here's how to install it. First of all, when asking for a save file, make sure you state that you're using RPCS3. The file has to be coded in a certain way to work with the emulator. Also let them know the serial number that appears in this column to the right of Killzone 2. Here's what the save file will look like. It's a folder that has the serial number as part of its name. There should be several files inside, but don't mess with those. At the top of RPCS3, CS3, go to Manage, Save Data, then View Folder. Up at the top, click into the Save Data folder. On this screen, 
paste in the save file folder you were given. If you already have a save there, you'll need to tell it to replace it. And the file is now installed. Another thing that people have trouble with is the controls. I recommend you go into your settings and make sure your high precision box is checked. If you don't have that checked, then you're not going to be able to hit anything. I suggest you also do alternate 2 as the button mapping because that best resembles modern first person shooters. As for the sensitivity, I have been increasing it over time as I got better at the game. If you're just starting off, you may not want to do 100% sensitivity like I did here, but you can if you want. Next, let's talk about DLC. There are some multiplayer maps that were only available via DLC back in the day. Those maps are no longer sold by Sony. If you want to play on those maps, you will have to resort to piracy. Basically, you download the files from somewhere and then drag and drop them into the game list. Just note, PS Rewired does not support piracy, so do not go onto their Discord asking for files. YouTube also forbids creators like me from showing where to get such files, so finding the files is a journey that you will have to take on your own. This is all a mute point though, because it's rare that anyone creates a match with the DLC maps, there's just not enough players that have those maps installed. Of course, as we get more players, it's possible that the trends will change. So that's all I had to show you today. Hopefully this video was helpful. I'll see you on the battlefield.